Welcome to Shred Show, I'm Chris, and this is the internet's most stoked surfboard show. Big shout out to Ross Anderson in Hawaii, we're sending you some sandals and some fins for all the barrels that you're getting in Maui. Also, since so many of you were honest last episode and said that you'd never been barreled before in your life, we chose three of you to get prize packs from Sanook. That's Tyler Sterling and OB, Paul Abbas on the Mediterranean, and Tyler Hooper. So send us a YouTube message with your address and we'll send you something fresh in the mail. Shred Nation really quick before we begin, if you like all the time that we spend here talking about surfboards, then get on Facebook, get on Reddit, or get on a soapbox in the middle of Main Street and tell everyone that you're watching because it would really help the show. Today we talk about a board from Ford Archbold, who along with Alex Nost sometimes seems as if he'll surf no board that doesn't have clear ties to the 80s or earlier. This one's called Fried Till You Die, and you see him surfing it now. We'll have more clips from him later this episode. It was designed by Blake Peters, who splits much of his time shaping and shredding between Newport Beach, California and Monavale, New South Wales. Looking at the outline and at the foil on this board, you could think that this board looks retro because of how thick that it stays out towards the tail and the nose, coupled with where the wings are placed back here in the outline. They're placed all the way up here at the leading edges of the first two fins, and that's a very uncommonly forward wing placement when you compare this board to other boards that you'd find in a surf shop today. These wings have everything to do with the width of the surfboard because cutting wings this deep into the outline of the board right here narrows this part of the tail significantly relative to the width of the board up here. What wings do is they place a pivot point on the water right here for you to turn off of, and generally when we move wings up further on the outline, the most extreme case being a Ben Ipa Sting way back from like 1974 or five, that usually makes the board feel a bit more loose and pivot tighter on the water because when we place the wing further up on the board, we're creating a longer section of the board that's much narrower than the rest of it. What really stands out about this board to me though is how narrow the board is in the forward two thirds or three fourths of the board up here when you compare it to other boards that you could conceivably surf similar waves on. The width in this board is 19 and seven eighths at its widest point and when you compare this board to boards of identical volume like a hypto crypto or a disc 2 this one comes in at about a quarter inch more narrow even though this board is also about an inch shorter than both of those boards. It's also narrower than the dimensions that you would ride in boards like a speedball, baked potato, double agent, or weirdo ripper in similar waves. So since this board is so short and since it's so narrow here and even narrower back here, that's a hint that you're gonna surf this board very thick from the nose to the tail because your float has to come from somewhere. The point is that the thickness in this shape is what allows us to get away with such a narrow board here and an even more relatively narrow board back here, and that narrowness, especially in the tail, tells us you may enjoy this board for compact turns like this one because of how the board pivots so tightly with minimal slide. Rolled V beginning in the nose, transitioning to flat somewhere around the 24 inch mark, immediately becoming a single concave, very deep, staying deep, very deep through the tail, finally ending in a flat out the back. What's exciting about the concaves on this board is that they start on the bottom with one style of hole and then transition to the exact opposite. The rolled V up in the first third of the board makes a shape like this going from rail to rail, starting on one side and dipping down to where the stringer is and then coming back up to the rail on the other side. Side. And that helps this thickness we spoke about in the board sit down into the water better. You may also find this style of rolled V useful for dealing with chop on the water because this board will push through wind chop similar to the way that the bottom of a boat works where a concave would only amplify the jerky out of control sensations that you would feel from wind chop because of the way that the board concaves up into the stringer and then curves back down to the rail. And all that does is funnel wind chop right into the center of the board where the rolled V instead breaks up water and disperses it out past the rail. However, the concave that we saw in the back two thirds of the board here adds lift to the board right beneath where your feet are, and that likely helps you stay on rail in the type of tight pivoting turns that we just saw Ford do. This type of tail is often called a round tail or a thumb tail, and it's interesting to talk about because it falls right in the middle of the other most popular tail shapes. On one side, you have squashes and swallow tails, generally giving more foam and surface area to a tail, and then on the other side, you have rounded pintails, which have a similar shape as this, but come down to a more narrow point, as well as legit pintails, which actually do come all the way down to a point in the tail. The difference is you've got wider tails on one end and more narrow tails on the other end. And this gentle elliptical shape holds less surface area through the tail 
than swallows or squashes, letting you feel a more smooth and connected sensation between your turns when compared to those tails. It also helps give this board a bit more versatility in steeper waves, where you may find it easier to keep pace with a barrel because of the extra hold you can feel in the face of a steeper wave with this tail shape, helping you keep pace with the pocket when you want, while still feeling looser and more turnable beneath your feet than a pin or a rounded pin would. Panda also makes this model in a swallowtail, and my take on that is if you want an extra 5% of performance in mushy waves, go with that swallowtail because it adds more foam and surface area. But if you want a board with an extra 5% of performance in the type of waves we just saw Ford get barreled on, then go with this for the reasons that we just described. You don't need me to tell you that this board has a very flat rocker, but if you look up close, you would find that this board has surprisingly more tail rocker curve than you might expect. For example, this board is an inch shorter than the RV that we did a few weeks ago, but both boards have the exact same overall curve measurement in the tail rocker. That's exciting because we usually assume that the longer surfboard will have a greater overall curve in the tail rocker because it has to curve across a longer distance from the center of the board all the way out to the tip of the tail. But this one makes the same amount of total curve in the tail rocker over a shorter distance. You may compare this board to a doinker which we discussed months ago because even though the two shapes could not be more different, I think that you can have a lot of fun on this board in the same kind of waves that the doinker was designed for. You would just likely find that this board feels a little bit quicker. That's because the doinker was so wide that it took a little bit of time to get from rail to rail, but since this board is so narrow, it feels more responsive to the waves that you ask it to turn, and you can get an immediate direction change from this board where a doinker might be slightly slower in responding, even though the doinker would be slightly faster down the line because of its increased width and its shorter length. This highlights two different and sometimes confusing terms when we talk about surfboards. Quickness, which I describe as how quickly and immediately a board responds to your demands for maneuvering it. And fast, which I describe as the speed that you have as you're flying across water. The two qualities often work against each other, and when you design a board to maneuver really efficiently, it often makes the board a little bit slower down the line. And when you design a board to go really fast, it often makes the board maneuver less quickly. It all comes down to your own personal experiences and preferences, so if you live anywhere near Newport Beach in California or Mona Vale in New South Wales, call Panda and ask if they have any demo boards you can try out. Tread Nation, that's it for this episode. If you are surfing a Fried Till You Die or a Synthetic Sally or a Doinker or a Nortz or any other models by Panda Surfboards, please tell us what you think in the comments below on YouTube. We hope the waves are firing wherever you find yourself today and we'll see you soon on Shred Show. Oh.